welcome back to my channel. We're going to make an apron today because on my last video I asked if anyone would want an apron tutorial and I got multiple hearty yeses. So that's what we're going to do today. My mom and I have been making this very same apron for literally decades. <laughs> Neither of us has deviated. It makes a great gift. In fact, in my first year of marriage, my mom made me a new apron for every holiday that came along during that first year. So then I had seasonal aprons for every holiday. It was so cute. She also makes these to gift with a cookbook and some sheet pans for wedding gifts, things like that. It's a great housewarming gift or just a good gift for friends. So before we get started, make sure you like this video, that you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next tutorials and share this with your sewing friends or your wannabe sewing friends. <laughs> so do that and then we'll get started. For this project, you just need a yard and a half of fabric. I choose cotton fabrics, but linen works great too. Don't use polyester. You need a yard and a half. I used to buy just a yard and you can squeeze an apron out of a yard of fabric if that's all you have, it's fine. But now I buy a, buy a yard and a half so I don't have to squeeze, so I have some scraps left over. And because I sort of altered this to make the straps longer so they go around my waist and tie in the front, which I think gives it more of a modern look, but you can also use my mom's method. I didn't iron this apron. <laughs> use the wider straps. This is a Christmas apron. I made, this one is just out of quilting cotton. A funny Santa print. This one has the wider straps that are intended to tie behind the waist. And same with the neck strap. With this apron, I made it so that the straps are skinnier and more floppy and they tie they go all the way around your waist and tie in the front and i like this one the best so this is the one i'm going to make today with my peach fabric but if you go over to my pattern shop and you purchase the pdf tutorial version of this then you can print it off so you can make this over and over again without having to come back to the video every time and that will have both strap versions on there they both will have the pocket too we're gonna of course make a pocket today I actually don't only wear aprons for cooking, I also wear them for cleaning because not only do they protect my outfits from toilet bowl cleaner, they also give me pockets to put like Legos and hairpins in as I clean. So pockets for me on aprons are a must. All right, I washed and dried my fabric. I'm gonna fold it wrong side out just so you can see the lines I'm drawing. Best part of this apron pattern is that you don't need a pattern at all. You don't need pattern pieces. You're gonna make it yourself. Then once you've made it, this is the way I make a new apron every time. I take my old apron and I trace it. <laughs> I fold it in half, place the fold on the fold of my fabric, and I just add my seam allowances and trace it. So this is a patternless pattern. Okay, so you're gonna fold your fabric in half lengthwise, selvage to selvage. And this is how you're going to draw your pattern. You need a ruler or yardstick, quilting ruler or yardstick. I'm going to use a pencil just so you can see it. Normally I would use my yellow marking tool, but I want you to be able to see this. So you're going to draw your first line at the top. You're just going to draw a straight line. It needs to be at least 13 inches long. So I'm just going to draw that first line here. Then I'm going to measure down from that using my mat, 31 and a half inches. Use a measuring tape to help you. So from my first line, 31 and a half inches is here. Once you have the basic apron concept down, you can alter this to fit a larger person, like a man who's broader in the chest or a plus size person, or you can shrink it to fit a child. Okay, so I have one line here, one line here. They're 35 and a, or they're 31 and a half inches apart. Now I'm gonna measure up 13 and a half. I'm gonna put a few marks so that I can connect them all because my ruler is not long enough. I'm making sure my fold is lined up down here and I'm just marking 13 and a half all the way across. And then I will just connect them. Like I said, once you have one apron made and you can just continually trace that, this project becomes even easier. These instructions do account for your seam allowances. Okay, so now we have a rectangle here and now we need to form a curve. So along your top line here, measure down 
eight inches and make a mark. And along your top of your apron line here, measure six and a half inches and make a mark. So I have a mark here and a mark here. I lost my mark. Six and a half. Okay, here's the non-scientific part. You're just going to draw a curved line to connect. Okay, just like that. And now you're gonna cut it out. Don't worry if you didn't get all those measurements because you can hop over using the link and just purchase the printable version of this for a few dollars so you can have it to refer back to. So if you were to make this with just one yard of fabric, you would cut a pocket out of this and you would squeeze straps out of the rest. So that's how it would work if you only bought one yard. But here is our apron section. I love this fabric, it's so cute. It's from Hobby Lobby, it's like a thicker cotton. You can use canvas or denim too. My mom made my dad an apron when my sister and I were little and she let us paint our handprints onto it. <laughs> it was his grilling apron. Okay, so let me set that aside. I'm gonna cut out my straps and my pocket next. So using these long sections, I'm gonna use my rotary cutter to cut my straps. Strap lengths can really vary. My mom likes her shorter, like I said. Also, she likes her neck strap much longer than I do, so we're gonna cut it a little longer, and then you can adjust it before you sew it down how you like it. So let me form a straight edge here. And we need two, two long straps and one neck strap. Our long straps, our ties for my skinnier tie version are going to be two inches. So I'm gonna cut two long two inch pieces. I'm gonna make them measure 38 inches. This will be long enough to tie around the back and up to the front. Okay, then for my next strap, I'm going to cut the next strap two and a half. It's a little bit wider than my waist strap. Oh my gosh, this poor ruler, the markings are just worn off, but it's my favorite one. Okay, my next strap only needs to be 30 for starters, but I'm probably going to cut it shorter the way that I like it. Okay, but we made it longer just so we can adjust it later. So that's for my next strap. The last piece is my pocket. Okay, I like to make one rectangular pocket that's divided down the center. So we're gonna cut that 15 by nine. Cut nine this way, 15 this way. So let's go over these measurements again. You have your apron piece. It should measure 31 and a half inches long. And then at the hem, 27 inches all the way across, plus you have your armholes. Okay, then you have a pocket that measures 15 by nine. You have a neck strap. Which one is my neck strap? You have a neck strap that measures two and a half by 30-ish. And you have two long straps that measure two inches by 40 or 38 or however long you could make them. Okay, so let's get started with the sewing. First thing we're gonna do is attach our pocket. You can skip this step if you want, but like I said, my aprons have to have pockets. So first we need to hem it. This is how you hem a patch pocket. We're gonna first turn under a quarter inch and go press it. Then we're going to turn it back this way an inch and press it. And I will show you why in just a minute. So do you know when you buy store-bought things and sometimes there's raggedy edges sticking out of your pocket corners? This is how to avoid that. This is the proper way to sew on a patch pocket. 
So I pressed it under a quarter inch to the wrong side and then I pressed it back to the right side one inch. So our top hem will be one and a quarter inches. I'm gonna go sew down these short ends. It's three eighths inch from each edge, just this little part. You see how I just sewed the short parts? Now you can trim that corner. And we're gonna turn that right side out. So your raw edges are totally encased in your hem. Gently poke that with your chopstick. And now we're gonna go press it in place the right direction. And then after that, where you can just stitch down your hem along the edge. Okay, see how nice that looks? And my raw edges are all encased. So now we just have to press in these other edges. I'll go do that with my iron at 3 eighths of an inch. When you get to a corner, you press it one way, then you fold it in on itself, and you miter this corner like so. So it will look like this. I'm gonna go press that down. Okay, so my pocket edges are pressed into place, and now I'm going to stitch them on. So you want to center it. It might help you to hold it up to your body. But let's see, on this apron, I have it, if I have a one and a quarter inch hem up there, 13 inches down from the top, from the raw edge top. Okay, and then I wanna make sure I have it six and a quarter from that side, six and a quarter from that side. Wow, I eyeballed that pretty darn good. Okay, make sure we're straight and pin her in place. This is how I pin patch pockets. Since you're gonna start stitching here, you don't wanna put your pins in going this direction because then you ha it's hard to get them out. You wanna be able to slide them out in the direction that you're sewing. So when I turn the corner, I'm gonna be sewing this way. So I'm gonna put my pins going this direction. This fabric is making me so happy, it's so cute. There was a coordinating print that was like teal with bigger pink peaches, so cute. Okay, so we're just gonna go edge stitch this pocket in place. Alrighty, I edge stitched my pocket on an eighth an inch from all the edges, except the top of course. Now I'm going to sew it in half. So I have two pockets. I don't like to use my yellow marking tool because it doesn't always wash out. So I'm just going to mark it with my masking tape. So. Seven inches would be the halfway mark, it looks like. And then use a piece of tape. Every time I use this tape, I get asked about it. It is Scotch brand and I will link it for you in the notes. And yes, it is accurate as a ruler if you should need it to be. I've gotten so many questions about this tape. Okay, so I'm just gonna go stitch along my tape line. Okay, now I can just remove my tape. Washi tape works good for that marking purpose also. Okay, right, so now this is probably the fussiest part, but you can do it. I'm gonna take this over to the iron. We're going to press our hem. First, you're gonna press it a tiny bit. Usually it's very difficult to do a tiny hem on a curved or on any edge, but since this one's curved and on the bias, it folds itself over pretty easily. So first we'll fold it over about a quarter inch and then we're gonna fold it over again. And I'm going to go iron that in place. Okay, see how easily that curves, that folds over for me, even though it's a curve, it's because it's on the bias. So now I'm just going to go stitch my hems down. Okay, there's our beautiful side hems. Hems, like the songs, I meant hems. <laughs> okay, the next step is to do the same thing with these side edges. So first fold under a quarter inch, and then fold under again, press and stitch. Alrighty, we have two hems left. For the top and bottom, we're gonna make one and a quarter inch hem. So I'm gonna fold under a quarter inch and then another inch and press and stitch that. And do the same thing with the top edge. Alrighty, I pressed them, but I'm gonna go ahead and use some pins for these larger hems. Make sure they look nice and neat. All right, all my raw edges are hemmed beautifully. All that's left is the straps. So let me start with my neck strap. Actually, I'm gonna go sew these all at the same time. You're gonna fold each one in half lengthwise and stitch in a quarter inch hem. Not hem, seam. <laughs> With your neck strap and your strap straps. Okay, I sewed my straps. I forgot to say that for your neck strap, 
you leave both short ends open. But for your waist straps, you leave one short end open and the other short end you sew the quarter inch seam just like you did the long end and then you can trim your corner. Okay, the next task is to turn them right side out. I actually have a super cool tool that I will demonstrate to you in a minute. But if you do not have a super cool tool, you need a super cool safety pin <laughs> that you will attach like so. You can just hear my daughter saying. Okay, and then you slip it inside and you work it through to the other end. Yes, this might feel tedious to you, which is why I have the super cool tool. <laughs> but it's probably smart to learn how to do it so that you can always turn your tubes right side out. The good news is that we're almost done. I feel like you can make an, an apron in an hour once you get good at it. They make amazing gifts, especially with all the cool fabrics you can buy. If someone loves something specific, you can find a fabric in it. You can also find really fun food fabrics, coffee fabrics, sports team fabrics, Star Wars fabrics, and holiday fabrics like my mom did for me. Okay, so there, got it worked out. Remove your safety pin and press, but for the other ones, I have this tool called a fast turn in my vintage spaghetti jar. I've had this for over 20 years. It is still in perfect working condition. I will link you to this in the notes because this is probably my number one must have sewing room item. My daughter's cracking me up. I need to go tell her I can hear her singing on this video. See, this one might be too big. Okay, so you slide it on. It's kind of long, so you're gonna have to scrunch it. When you get to the end, I like to fold it over. Insert, this has like a little spiral. It's a point with a spiral on the end. And you twist it in to the other end of your tube. And then it pulls it right side out for you. Like so. Let me show you that again. You simply put the right size tube into your strap. This comes with a big one. This is the biggest, all the way down to one even smaller than this that my son broke when he was little. But you know what? I never miss that smaller one. That's just too small in my opinion. <laughs> okay, stick it in. You grasp this part and you just twist it until it comes out the end. And then you just pull it through. They're very strong, it will not break. So that's called a fast turn and I will put a link in the notes for it. Okay, I'm just gonna go press these flat because right now they look pretty bad. Make sure my ends come out. And then we are almost done. One last step. Okay, my nice pretty straps. Let's sew the neck strap on first. Whoops, that's not the neck strap. Oh, here it is. <laughs> sew these on. You're going to finger press under a quarter inch. Let me get these scragglies off. And then we're going to place it upside down at our apron's edge, like so. We're going to stitch it all the way around in a square. If you want to, you can also sew an X in the middle because it looks cool, but I'm not gonna do that. So I'm going to pin it in place. Your machine might have a little trouble over these thicker parts, so just go slow, use your hand wheel to help you as you push the foot pedal and that should help. Okay, I stitched this one down. You can see it's in a nice square all the way around the edges and it looks really cute from the outside. And then I put it on over my head to see where I wanted my other strap. So make sure it's not twisted. See how much excess I have? My mom though, she likes hers much longer. It just kind of depends on your body shape, your bust size, your hairdo size maybe, I don't know. So I'm going to trim this here. There goes my son. I'm a homeschool mom, if you can't tell. 
Okay, and then I can turn under my quarter inch and go stitch this one in place. Then I'm going to do the same thing I have thread sticking out with my long straps on my edges here. So I'm going to turn under a quarter inch and pin them to these corners and go stitch those on in a square also. And then this is your last step. All right, my cute apron is done. I'm gonna go try it on, but I wanna tell you a couple things first. We sew it on in a square so that it can be pulled on and tugged on, or if the strap gets wrapped around the washing machine agitator, then it's not gonna come off, it's gonna stay. And also, if I were to make one for my husband, and I need to because he keeps wearing my Christmas one to use his meat smoker, and now it is splattered with meat grease and stuff. So I think if I were to make him one, I would not only make it longer, because he's 6'2", I would also make it a few inches broader, but mostly when he puts on my aprons, they're too way too high. Like this is almost in his armpit. Whereas on me, this ties exactly around my natural waist. So I would lengthen this part, not just lengthen the bottom. So if I were to make it for a man, that's what I would do. If I were to make it for a child, I'd probably measure the child and then just sort of adjust my proportions accordingly. So if you have more questions about that, I'm happy to answer them. I also was thinking as I was sewing that this would be so cute to make an apron to wear in the sewing room or in your craft room. You can put your little things in here. Maybe not your scissors so you don't stab yourself, but you do you. <laughs> so yeah, that's the apron pattern that I was talking about. I hope you all enjoyed this. And make sure if you do make one with your existing apron, you add the seam allowances on when you draw it. So usually I lay mine out on my fabric like this. I get my marking tool and I just add a quarter inch here, or an inch and a quarter here, an inch and a quarter up here, and then I just roughly add half an inch on the side and here. So that's how you will make your future aprons is from your existing apron. <laughs> I hope this was helpful for y'all and I will see you soon. Bye.